Hi guys, it's Peter and Eddie from BS Sound and it's time to start the content for part three of this Mercedes project. So you can you can see a bit of insight into all the madness that goes into these cars. Don't come here. Did you fart? No. No. It's a dangerous move you do. It's just undercover. Oh my god. Don't have my gloves on. Oh yeah, for this you definitely need gloves. So yeah, you can see we use ferrules for everything. Speaker cable, signal cable, remote cable, power cable. There you go, nice. now it's safe. No, we signal cables, now we don't use it. Ferrules, we use. Well, signal cables, no, yeah, you can't no, use. No, no, no. No. I was just trying to wrap. So, <clears throat> yeah, wiring takes time. When people think that, you know, wiring up a few amplifiers is quick, it is not. Especially, yeah, when we want to do a bit of tidy braiding just to make it look pretty as well. Braiding has more to it than just making it look pretty. Of course, it's about protection. Although, what do you have to protect in the boot? Not much, but when you run cables underneath the side trims or through the bulkhead, things like that, then yeah, that that's extra attention. So Eddie started to hook up the input side, the input from the factory amp is gonna run on speaker level, but just only for phone calls because we will have opti optical input from the Topping D10S. Then we will also have, what other input we will have? We will have analog input as well. Analog input. Just in case. Amplifier. Bluetooth. No, no, we, no, we don't have Bluetooth. Oh, we don't? No, we don't. No, because we run everything from this crane through the topping. Yeah. We have all the inputs. All you the know, sources. proper termination with ferrules protected with heat shrink labeled so now the front sub is sub left we need we need new labels people always ask me pete where do you get these labels from wraparound type things well from a cable factory sorry i can't share that with you but if you buy one of those printing tools in mean, any of the tool stations you can just print your labels that easy put clear heat shrink over it things like that easy peasy there you go, our favorite, favorite picture when we stick our legs underneath it. I can't even reach that far. But yeah, that's that's where the sub will breathe through, through the floor. And yes, it will be protected, you will see it. So, before I start making a move on this, then I can have a bit of explanation about the sails. If we used small format, tiny little tweeters, then we could potentially just build straight onto the sail panel, which is not big, not big at all. Um, but because it's a larger tweeter, slightly. We 3D printed rings for them. I shaved a bit out of it so I can push it even further out. We need a bit of extension to the platform because let's, let's say you could mount it like, like this, but then it aims a bit too low in order to make it the desired angle that it comes away from the trim. And for that, I have to extend the platform. Um, then I can create a more flawless shape. Of course, everyone has a different idea about what it should look like. We have our own way, own style. So yeah, that needs building up. These rings bonded in place, the desired angle. And then we can build these. And till that settles, then we will move on to the A-pillars. So after they came out, you could see I trimmed them back, shaved it a bit here so it's going to be easier to build it to the desired shape. The fiber fill went through all those nice little holes so it holds better. But yeah, I will have to drill up all the way the perimeter just to make sure it doesn't separate. Same on the other side. These clips are not great. I already broke one of them, I super glued it. But to the time I fill everything up, I will add fiber fill to that clip as well. And it should hold. And of course, we also have now this extra platform that we can use um, proper 3M double sided tape underneath when we stick it back onto the surface. But that clip will hold literally everything plus those little tabs. Let's crack on.
yesterday and I, I got to the point to apply fine filler on it and I let it rest. That's why you could see the cut in the video and then probably from from the clock on the on the wall you could see and now in the last one hour I sand it that back and then still needed tiny tiny touches here and there plus a bit of extra strengthening at the back because these clips which hold they are not really rigid and actually I broke one so I had to super glue it back in place and then applied some crazy crazy stuff um, to fill it back bond it back so hopefully now it should hold better because I still have to put it back and take it out several times because this is the stage once I sand all this back that I have to drop in the car and then make sure that the lines are definitely Oh yeah, I cut into that a little bit from the back with the motor tool, but it's fine, it's gonna be underneath the tweeter. So yeah, we'll have to fill it back to the curves of the door card to make it exact. Just for a tweeter. But yeah, same way when we shared the video from the Tigu, and I think where we had a lot of time lapse when I mentioned that these are the things that you just can't skip and, and that there's no solution for this to make it any simpler, especially if you want to have a nice shape as well. Let's see what Eddie is doing this morning. Still caping. Still cabling, what are you doing here? Boy. Taking the panels off again, because I need more slack at the back for oh, you need cable. This oh. one, this one. Which is the... USB. USB. Yeah. But All the wiring is done, nice and tidy. Well, we will still need a speaker cable yeah. for the sub. Yeah. Signal rest. cables are in. Everything. Power. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, then it's starting there. This one, this one. And that's it. Cool, cool, cool. But it's still gonna take me an hour or two. Yeah, it's it's faff. It's yeah. have to make sure that you know it's, it's spot on. The helix looks very tidy. Yeah, everything is properly terminated as we showed earlier. Each ring labeled. <coughs> Easy to follow. Yeah, that's my only little nagging thing, but I had a chat with the owner and, and he didn't have an issue with the Zarko upside down, but that's how we could run the cables neater. And tidy, yeah and tidier because the power distribution comes from there then we can just split the power to the two monoblocks okay we have to run one two yeah just imagine if it was the other way around yeah then you would have signal block. and power going all yeah, yeah. crossing and everything that's all right cool let's have breakfast and then crack on
Yummy, yummy. So I had to design the grill for the driver because we will hide all of the drivers up front. Of course, it's not gonna sit over these bars, but these bars can pop out easily and they are not glued in, they are just precision made. We don't need them, we yeah. are going. We did that on the tweeters before. There you go. Pretty, nice support that has to come out. Yeah. Need speaker cloth, and then we can see if it. And this is. The worked out. This is ABS, is not PLA, so it doesn't distort in the sun, warp. Yep. Because PLA, especially on this thickness, will fail in the sun. This will stay nice and straight. Yep. There you go. Real. There you go. Almost. We have to take those bars out, and it looks. Like it doesn't fit, huh? It looks about right. It looks about very precise to the time we <coughs> we have trimming on this speaker cloth on that is going to be super tight, yeah. maybe too tight. We will see. Don't mid range if you look from the profile. Mm. Yeah. We love them. I think you had enough of of this wiring madness. I still do. Leaning some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leaning over the one and a half days wiring, yeah. yeah, pretty much. So yeah, this is this is it. Wiring is done now. We can start putting panels back. Although there we will have to play a little bit. That's why we didn't secure the cables just yet, because we will see how that panel goes in. Because it has a deep pocket going down there. Oh, actually, something we have to deal with Eddie, before putting the panel back flaps. Yes, we have to rip the shit out yeah. uh, do we have both sides yes yes we have both sides i would i would block that because that's where the amp is and actually we had crap a lot of crap in there yeah. we will seal that and then rip the flaps out of that and put grain guard over that we have to leave one open because especially cars like these coupes um they are frameless and frameless cars can have issue with the air condition if you seal the car completely and if you block both outlets then you turn the aircon on and then it will whistle because the air will have to escape somewhere the pressure difference will have to escape and then it goes through the the windows and that's pretty annoying because we did that in an sp air car we sealed everything up and uh, it wasn't fun um yeah but in this one we don't want the flaps to make that horrible noise like in any other car that's pretty standard normally when we do that unless you have a saloon then you you can't really hear it through you can hear it outside and if yeah. it bothers you you can do it you can take the panels out and then those little rubbery flaps can be ripped out with a plier but then it needs a rain guard over it so the dust and the crap cannot come in even this way it can come in because when we stripped it out and we hoovered it we saw it so we'll get rid of one of them the other one is enough so now all the wiring is in the driver is not bolted in yet because we have to sort out the protection underneath um, and it's easier to do that if the driver is out yeah it looks pretty compact a lot of yep. gear in a little space you usually wouldn't be able to do anything like this in a spare wheel because you would need a box you would have to use all this space for a subwoofer be it a custom sealed enclosure, let's say, or small ported box or whatever. People, some people use these prefab boxes that they can just drop over the spare wheel or something. Um, whereas now we have many amps here, power distribution and the big 15 inch sub. And that will play low as hell. So that's at the back. Um, 
sales. Actually, I don't have to do anything with them because I thought that I would have to tape it up and then refill it again, but my original mold was done so well that, and I didn't screw it up. I didn't um, send any further than the line. That's why it's nice to put a Sharpie line on the masking tape because that transfers onto the mold from underneath, then you can see it. So they are done. And you will need double-sided tape underneath because that clip holds it on the top, but yeah, double-sided tape is gonna hold it firm. And onto the mid-range situation. You could see from the time-lapse that I was cutting the pillars up, ripping the uh, original carpet off. And just exactly where we would wanna have the mid-range, we have nothing behind the pillar other than little brackets and then factory cable running up there. But where we need the mids, over there and here as well, we have the stupid tie point of the airbag. The airbag starts on the top of the pillar, actually. You can't even see it. It starts above the roof line and it drops down. But to make sure that the airbag doesn't fly too far away or it keeps it in position, you have that rope going down and then tied to the bottom of the pillar. And it's really, really in the way. So we will have to do a bit of customization to that. I fitted uh, the inserts in the 3D printed ring. We used the solderer and melted the inserts in so I could bolt it in, tape it up to protect the nice magnet to make sure that we have tolerance. And that's the point when I always tell to people that you can't really build pillars without the car. You know, someone just built it on the pillar, you try to put it and you can't put it in because, you know, something is just in the way. And you don't want to build away from the pillar, it would come too far out, especially on driver's side, then you would have clearance for sure. We rather like to push it back flush with the pillar to make it flow and as, you, sort of minimalistic and, and less intrusive as possible. Um, but yeah, it's just right there behind the magnet. So I will have to take it out, tighten that rope probably further up and then make a mounting point for it. Very nice. Shit, I missed to record that bit. Yeah. Come on, put it back, cut it again. Yeah. So yeah, on that side, we shape. Yeah, it was <laughs> I can show it on this side, that bracket. So that bracket is the one which is in, in our way. So what we did, we drilled further up, actually there's a box section there. Um, and the steel is pretty thick, probably like good four mil. So that's why I left this in, because I tapped it up. So we have a new bolting point now over there. So this thing, as it was running down behind these tabs, now it can be folded back and then bolted in just like that. And it's still tight. And then this way, the original mounting point is freed up. So we can get rid of that. We can gain that bit for mounting our mid-range. Yeah, it's already, it's already folded there and bolted back up. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, shall we just finish the day? Yeah. There you go. People can see me from the rear view mirror and they can see you from the side mirror. <laughs> you idiots in the car. Uh, sitting in the back seat. This is the audio file experience. The stage is just so far away. Bloody hell. Well, not as far away as it's in the Citroen. <laughs> yeah. You have another meter on the dash. Oh, but you the, know, guys, the guys on YouTube, they don't know what, what we are talking about. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, we haven't introduced your, your daily car yet. He has yeah. a Citroen. That's that's all we can say for now. <laughs> Maybe when, when it looks a bit more presentable, then we will introduce it. Yeah. Um, so, what, what am I recording now? Um, we are getting close to the end of the day today. Um, but not at the end of the video. No, no, just, yeah, but, you know, like I said, how better I finished on Monday evening. Okay. Um, then we will have 
the part where I show where I finished today. So yeah, installing mids and tweeters. Um, yeah, these mid-range speakers are not that simple to install due to the shape of it. They made it half circular, half oblong, funky. At least we could 3D print the mounting, that makes life easier. Once we have the speaker grills on, everything trimmed, it will blend in nicely. But um, yeah, the mids are going to be quite off axis because they will easily play up to beaming point, even off axis. Um, but yeah, this is another daily car and it has to be practical as well. Practical. We don't like blocking the view as much. Well, just imagine building a pod there in the corner of the dash. Yeah, I'll some be... some people build a pod for the mid and the tweeter and it hangs in like a foot onto the dash. Yeah. I don't want to say it's American style, but that's pretty much the only place where I see pods like that, to be fair. Yeah, I think I saw In Europe. Europe, nah. Asia. In Europe, they don't Europe, do it. Most people, really. especially those people who are really, really serious, they also compete in Emma. So that would just rule it out because they have the four centimeter rule. In Asia, they don't do anything like that. They build everything on the pillars. Yeah. They build four inch mids with tweets, with super tweeters <clears throat> and everything you can imagine. Maybe they even stick a cat on the, on the, you know, on the A-pillar just to make it more fluffy and absorb more shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now we are going a bit off, but... That's um, bad. Dash pad, my, my favorite bit, dash pad. And windscreen. Oh, no, 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 no dash pad. You just, you just throw a towel on it. Yeah. One with, uh, say it, unicorns, mm. pink unicorns. Mm. And then we can sing somewhere over the rainbow with it. Yeah. Oops. So, yeah, now we have to build up the pillars, but um, I had to stick a five, six mil foam at the back of the driver and I'm gonna draw a picture in this one and you can see that that distance is it away from the steel so we definitely have clearance yeah those ply sticks now stick out quite far but they will be cut off but this way it was easier to hold the stick till it was glued in place um, yeah trimming will be funky it is what it is Oh, let's show your creation as well here. There you go, black. I can't see anything. Yeah. Black in the dark, you can't see anything. There you go. Well, it's not cut yet all the way. Oh, come on. <laughs> so the other side has to be cut as well and then tied it up and then the base can enter the cabin. Explain to the guys because we didn't cut the seats. What? Some people might think that we cut the seat. What seat? This one, the, the backrest. That one. <laughs> it's a ski hatch. Yeah, it is. It's plastic. Yeah, it is plastic on both sides. No, I thought. Oh, you can't, no, it, that's sorry. obvious. You can't see from there, but from my oh. angle, I see the foam, and it looks like we cut ah. the seat. That's why I was. Yeah, you know, that, that was like that. Yeah. From factory. Mm, okay. That was the confusion. So this is nice and push fit. I forgot that you have plastic there. Where? On this side. In my side, yeah. What plastic? Forget about it. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. So, nice and simple. This way we have decent breathing area. So the base can get through. All right, let's take the pillars out, build them.
As you could see, the GoPro went flying, just like it happened before with, <laughs> with the trio on the bench. Um, yeah, once I focused on the pillars, I didn't even pay attention to the stand on the corner of the bench. And, uh, and then I thought, you know, you, you, you've got enough time lapse. It's getting a bit boring. Peter just sending, sending, sending. But this is where we are. So from outside, the shape is done. Uh, fine sanded ready for the trim but I still have to do the usual bonding from the back because over there you can see it's pretty thin where I sanded it back that's actually the glue there so it needs proper thick layer of milkshake to bond it same way other sides all those little holes to pull it together so it's not gonna separate and to the time we have the milkshake from the back then of course it's going to hold even stronger. So let's do the shaky shaky. This needs a bit of footage as well. So obviously because we have that 15 in, in the boot, that's going to have some pressure on the tailgate, so that needs attention. But um, there's no way to get into the inside of it. There's not a deep cavity, but the outer skin cannot be deadened. So we added weight from the inside and on the top, at least behind the wretch plate, 
you can get to the outside, but not there. So, yeah, not every car ticks all the boxes when it comes to yeah, having those boxes for just pure audio. It wasn't designed for that. It's great when you can get into the inner skin and you can deaden it, you can feel it, but yeah, not here. We will see. We will see how much it's gonna buzz and rattle until we can't hear it inside of the car while listening to music. It's fine. Um, and we will isolate that panel. That carpet needs isolating. So we had to cut out those panels front and back to get a bit more breathing for that sub to get into the cabin. So at the speaker cloth, the back panel towards the, the boot, you can see little holes, that's where the bolts go through. A bit of choppy choppy, so that's all opened up. So that will be bolted back. Oh, I can't even put it there with one hand, but you get the idea. You will see later what it looks like, but it will look stealthy as if almost like factory, but then the base can get into the cabin way, way easier this way. So the usual milkshake with a lot of steel mixed into it, and that gives more rigidity, more weight to make it more dead. But yeah, all that we'll need deadening all the way up on the plastic. And now it's officially ready, ready for the trim. a bit of tape over the threaded inserts because we don't want any anything going into it screwing up our thread because then after that you can't clean it out especially if this this stuff goes into it if you want to know what milkshake is then please go to the car audio fabrication playlist fabrication tricks and tips or something like that i will put it in the description then you can click on it and then over there you will easily find a separate video where we show what we put into milkshake because we always get us there's a separate video for that and yeah you can mix a lot of things into it but you will see in that video so they are now finally ready for dropping in yeah trimming these shapes is not as simple people always ask me what we use what material it is type of suede similar to Alcantara it's not Alcantara um, it's called Milano but I don't know whether it can be bought anywhere else other than UK um, a trimming supplier sells it in UK called AS trim <coughs> there you go a bit of an information so now the whole pillar is deadened yeah down there I don't have to deaden anything that's still as that as it can have a gap plenty of airflow for the driver so it's ready to go in to the sail panels. I'm not even sure at what stage we are at with these videos because uh, yeah at the end of any project especially this one is now pretty tight we have to come in Saturday morning as well just to make sure that we get as much done as possible we still don't have a floor panel and it's Friday 6 p.m. that is gone um, car has to be handed over on Sunday but I also have family life, so <laughs> it's fun. The good thing is at least that uh, the system is running and everything has worked out just as we expected, but we will go into that detail a bit later. But what I wanted to show right now is a protective layer. There are the videos in the True IB playlist. I will drop that into the description. Hopefully I don't forget that. If I do, please drop a message that, hey, we need that link to the True IB playlist. But you can also click on the playlist scroll down you find it and there are separate videos and in many other builds we show this rain guard stuff it's like the, the foam they use for pa speakers outdoor speakers i don't know how you can find it in other countries but search for pa uh, grill foam or something like that and um water cannot penetrate through this especially upwards this is not going to come through so we made it simple we just created a mounting ring underneath where we glued this foam into and squashed it you can see the glue all around the edge and it's squashed against 
the floor with really thick closed cell foam and that nicely squashes against the indentations and the irregularities on the floor this way it seals it all around as you can see these are the bolts I showed earlier we used to bolt the one inch ply ring to the floor and simple as that you can see the light through so this is 320 mil diameter for the 15 inch sub because yes it's 15 inch sub roughly 380 millimeter wide but that's including the basket the surround so you don't need a huge hole it could have been even smaller because it, this is exactly 100 percent of the cone area so nothing is limiting the driver this is not limiting and this is not making noise far enough from the cone it cannot touch it and we also have this lip of the one inch uh, buffle so yeah there's plenty of space for excursion for the driver so now i can drop the sub in finally bought it in permanently quite funny that we just place the sub down we power the system up put a quick tune on it to let it run and play and um even if the driver wasn't bolted in it was playing just as fine and it wasn't uh, bouncing or rattling or anything like that uh, <laughs> i'm not saying that it's, it's the right thing don't do that bolt it in you can see the inserts there for the machine bolts so i can drop the sub in now um as i showed in the previous shots the speakers are now trimmed <sighs> just have to wipe them so we have a speaker cloth on them so this way the system looks pretty stealthy oh i i hate this thing in mercedes no take it take it away no i don't want it you can't just press a button so it goes back no it stays there for a good while uh, um so this is what the solution has turned into finally I quite like the speakers with other speaker cloth but I can't pop them out now because they are really push fit tight we will take them out when the owner comes so I can show it to him and then I will show it to you as well guys what it looks like without the speaker cloth grills because he has these wooden inserts in the car everywhere and actually with that these speakers with the golden uh, trim rings they actually look nice but it's quite shouty it's not something you want to park up on a rough area this way nobody's gonna tell anything you know it looks pretty smooth it blends in mid base you can't see front sub you can't see at all there you go floor mat went in nothing zero you can't see anything yeah cables for tuning um, you will have to sort that out. I have nothing to do with the tablet and that solution. That's only temporary. That will be his job, but you will hear his thoughts about this project as well. When he comes to pick it up, I will try to make sure that we have footage of that. That might be a, an extra video. Another part where we hand it over so you can hear him, what he thinks about the system. Okay, let's drop the sub in and then I can I can finish this we are almost there Saturday the last half day still have almost two hours so that's gonna be the plate uh, as trim panel above the sub trim carpeted at least the base can come through the holes we don't limit the pressure that much but if the owner wants to listen to music critically then they can just pop it out needs trimming needs trimming and it needs a break it's trimming it needs Maybe. it needs gel in your hair <laughs> uh, you can see me here. Yeah. no you look after yourself you don't say that um now we are sorting out the wiring for the led lights because we will have a bit of down wash <clears throat> to light up that area just to make it a bit prettier yeah not for now and this is the end of this video for now guys I started this video calling it part three, but actually this is part four because we had the introduction. Um, 
yeah we got three weeks three weeks for this car but we couldn't work so much on it in the first two weeks i might have mentioned it during the progress uh first week we still had chris's audi tt that you could see footage of then second week um, i had um, guest family members coming around so i was off for a day eddie had covid um yeah so the last week became crazy that's why the footage for this part is so long we try to create as much content for you so you can see what goes into a more complex system like this but at the end we also lost focus focus of um, taking footage but i hope that you have seen you have seen plenty of um, behind the scene well not behind the scene this is the actual scene this is what goes into into these cars the car was taken away sunday we spent quite a few hours with the owner just to make sure that he's uh, absolutely happy with everything we did the final uh, slight adjustments made different presets just to make sure that um, you know when i tune a car then um, it gets a linear tune but normally people want slight changes because some people like a bit more bass usually 80 percent of people want more bass which is not clean but then they can also go back to the tune that i i normally start with it's a blank canvas and from that we can always create our own but as soon as the owner also finishes uh his car pc and the speakers running then he will come back and we will have the final adjustment and probably we will have another video at that time that's gonna be months and months away but after this you will still have footage of this car so this was the build the introduction and the three parts showing the build and uh, the next video i'm going to try to share that at the weekend so you have something to watch and i know for some people it's difficult to catch up because some people tell me that we share quite a lot and they just don't find the free time to watch it but at the same time i know that many of you are just you know sitting and waiting and you can't wait till we share a video that's why i want to share the final expla explained walk around video with you at the weekend and then early next week before easter then i'm going to share the demo the demo video which i always say that you should never listen to these demo videos as a reference and then i get the comments beep yeah you always say that yet they sound bloody awesome um that video will be quite something we were sitting in the car with the owner together um, i was recording and we were chatting listening to songs and there will be moments in in the car where we were both getting shivers and my hair was tickling and oh it's it was a fantastic system because of of the the push at the end we didn't have any free time to really enjoy the car and it didn't even hear the car at the very end we finished it saturday morning as you could see by saturday lunchtime and then we had to shoot um and the final tune actually happened on sunday on on day uh, of the handover and Eddie didn't even hear it um which happens quite often it was the same with the amarok he didn't hear that when that left but now that's back you could see the introduction a few days ago when i shared the the new subs and the project in the amarok in the pickup truck and at least he could hear that van after a month but then we ripped everything out and now we are rebuilding everything we are rewiring but at least he could hear that and hopefully he will hear this CIK as well in the future and I also hope that many people will hear the CIK because that car is bonkers. What? We had comments saying that the, the amplifier is not necessarily enough for this system, the Helix V8, because someone was asking, you know, Pete, is it enough? And then what, what angle do we approach it from? Um, power, quality? and yeah sure you know when people look at an installation at this level they would potentially expect um, better quality amplification but at the same time at least the owner of this car understood that installation is way more important than the equipment you have to have the speakers in the right locations 
using the right applications for the drivers or when you know what the application is you have to select the best driver for that within the budget um, yes the speakers were not cheap they were great drivers and then maybe that's why people were like you know why are you using this cheap amplifier the helix v8 is not cheap it's not cheap at all um maybe someone says it's cheap who lives in in the usa or in uk in scandinavia or in australia or at some other parts of of the world where the 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 wages are how to put it you know the minimum wage is more than what a helix v8 costs for those people the helix v8 the sp can be cheap but then probably 80 percent the rest of the world is in a very different position and for them that's still a very expensive amplifier and dsp and they have to work months and save up probably for half a year or a year to buy it um, and i just designed a system yesterday for someone from abroad who wants to bring the car over and we at the end we ended up that that's still the best solution it gives the best value to have a multi-channel amplifier with the built-in dsp that can have extra additional modules like a usb or a bluetooth module can have different types of uh, controllers as well and that owner was also in the same situation thinking hey it's just a small one box solution can can it be really great can it sound great really what is it like compared to my factory system in the car compared to my uh, Bullmeister system and the amplifier in that system i'm like well compared to that the helix v8 or any helix or any multi-channel amplifier we use from, from zapco or stag they are all high-end compared to that. That's the difference. People have to understand that technology has changed so much in the last few years that even these one-box solutions can really stun people. If someone sits in the CIK without knowing what hardware we have in it, they wouldn't be able to tell. They just wouldn't, because the system is tuned properly, installed, installed really well, and that's what you know makes the biggest difference not what fancy amplifiers we have in it because no we don't we don't have any anything fancy in it but the amplifiers have plenty of power and headroom they're clean they don't have system noise yeah maybe it's not the most transparent and dynamic amplifier for the components but it does a fantastic job and you will see even from a demo video that's the point when when i say don't use it as reference but maybe yeah Let's, let's use it as a reference, because if someone can show me a better recording on YouTube that sounds better than what this car is going to do, then I want to hear, I want to hear that video. Because that's the point when people say that this video sounds so good. If they sound so good, they must sound even better in real life. And that's true. It sounds even better in real life. In a demo video, there will be a part when I will turn the music up and the microphone will just distort as hell. <laughs> it's not gonna deal with it, but then when we sit in the car, it gives a completely different experience when you feel the music and, and it has no distortion, it's clean, plenty of headroom. You've, you just, you lose yourself completely. Um, and yeah, nothing rattles in the car, which, which is a major difference compared to some cars where you hear buzzes and tagged rattling, roof rattling, things like that. So hopefully, some of you will be able to see and hear this CIK because I think the owner um, should come around to a few meetings in the future. I hope he will. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he's a very lucky guy because I, I don't even think that he expected or I don't even, I didn't expect such a great result in his car, but it turned out to be fantastic. There's no surprise, great equipment, great installation. So the result should be great. Um, but this platform just worked out so well and I feel a bit better as well that I didn't, I didn't have time to enjoy it more. So this is the end of this part guys, it has become quite long. As I said, the weekend full walk around video is coming uh, with him saying a few words about his um, experience with us and with this project and then demo video is coming early next week. So look out for those. If this is the first time you see anything from PS Sound, then please subscribe to the channel. Then you may get hooked and your wife will be, yeah, telling you off. Oh, it's Pete again. You're watching Peter again. Oh, I know many wives hate me. 
but I hear from many people that uh, they sometimes sometimes they watch these videos with, with their family members and, and whatnot and it means so much to them because they get inspiration to come back and, and do it they they lost their passion and love for car audio and now they they want to come back and that's one of the reasons why I share all this content because I I, I want to believe that this helps the whole industry the culture everyone moving forward if you want to go even deeper in into this madness we do in sound quality then please go to the description in the description you can find a link to patreon i have to mention it here and i try to mention it in every video because it's very important on patreon we share even more behind the scenes content we have weekly topics um, we have walk arounds we have rta evaluations where people can learn hell of a lot i i have new members coming every month and so many of them learn so much i have someone from a small um, Central Eastern European country who contacted me a few months ago and after he watched all the content over there as well plus YouTube he has already done so much improvements on, on his own system he has like a 10 grand euro system and he had he couldn't get any help from anyone from over there any shop and just by looking at our content and whatever we share he has had the, the, the push, the urge to, to do more research and then learn more, try different things, try to tune himself. And he's, he's already um, in a very good position. We just sent a message yesterday. It was great to uh, read it. I, to this stage, I, I haven't even had the time to respond to him, but that's the whole point. We can all help each other. And on Patreon, there's hell of a lot that can be learned. So I'm gonna leave this one here now, guys. Um, that's it. That's it for this one. Hopefully you liked it. Feel free to share it, comment on the video, just as usual. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Take care.